Okay, here's where we are in our outline of muscle-driven simulations. We talked about why to simulate movement, how they're so powerful and can give us new meaningful insights. And we've talked about what is a muscle-driven simulation. Now we're gonna talk about a key component and that is how to test a simulation. We're really trying to gain key insights into human movement biomechanics and we may be using those to recommend a surgery or design an exoskeleton. So we really wanna make sure we get the simulations to be validated. That is, they give us information that is useful and truthful enough to make uh, good progress. So the key question for today in this next set of segments is probably the most important question that we ask in simulation of movement. That is, is my model good enough? very common question that we get in the open sim forum and when we run workshops and of course i ask myself and i ask my students the question is formally known as verification and validation it's important to challenge and to answer everyone doing biomechanical modeling and simulation to make sure that we are getting the good answers unfortunately there's no precise recipe to follow that's one size fits all for every study but what I want to do is introduce you to some of the key principles that we use in my lab, and I'll illustrate these with a, a few case studies. So let's start with a couple important definitions. So verification and validation is the formal way to say, how is my model good enough? And verification is the process for determining that a computational model accurately represents the underlying model. So that is, are we solving the equations correctly? Validation is a, a distinct area. That is the process for determining the degree to which a model is an accurate representation of the real world. That is, am I solving the right equations? So am I really representing the real world well with my model? And if so, am I making, are there any bugs to fix in my code, for example? So why are verification and validation important? Number one, it's just good science. Number two, it'll help make an impact by convincing modelers and non-modelers to trust your research. And three, we wanna present, prevent major and minor catastrophes. We don't wanna embarrass ourselves and we don't wanna hurt others, so it's super important. Now, there are some famous verification and validation failures and I'll give you one. So Probe uh, was launched by NASA in 1998 to study climate and other conditions on Mars. And they lost communications about a year after the launch. Why? The software calculated the impulse that the thrusters needed in Imperial units, but the software calculating the trajectory was in SI units. So this very expensive Mars probe uh, burned up as it went through the atmosphere. So what do you think? Was that a verification failure or a validation failure? It was the wrong unit, so it was really a bug in the code. Now, these failures point out how important verification and validation is to any field can be used really in any field where modeling and simulation is used. But we're coming from the perspective of scientists, bi biologists and clinicians, and really validation is necessary. And there's really been what we call a, a validation crisis. There've been a, a few papers like most research findings are false. People can't reduce findings, or there might be a biological discovery. They try to validate it in a company to make a drug and they just can't do it. So it's absolutely essential that results be verified, validated, and be reproducible for science to proceed. Now, this can be particularly challenging in biomechanics. From the point of view of biologists or clinicians, one way to verify and validate is a randomized clinical trial. So this is really the gold standard for proving a technology works in patients. Essential to do these, they're just very expensive and hard to do. For engineers trying to validate something in biomechanics, one of the challenges is that it's 
very difficult to measure everything we want to measure. We, I mentioned that we can't measure muscle forces or muscle fiber strains in all the, in the muscles. So if we can't measure them, we don't have experimental validation, it's a real challenge. As I said, there's no recipe that's one size fits all, and it's not linear, it's iterative, but I wanna describe a set of principles that we use in my group and we apply in our research. It begins by formulating our research question, and it continues till the study is complete. So the steps are basically here, to define clearly your research question, to understand and evaluate your methods, to assess sensitivity, that is, if you're drawing a conclusion from analyzing a simulation, how sensitive is your conclusion to things that you don't really know in your simulation? So assessing sensitivity is key. Comparing your simulation results to experiments and other models is very important. And then making real world predictions and hypotheses that you can actually test. One of the most valuable things you can do with a simulation is predict something. You, if you make a prediction, then you want to go test it in the real world. And importantly, to share your model, share your software, enable people to reproduce your results. We can only really advance science if others can reproduce your results, and this is a key step. So I'm going to go through each of these in a little bit more detail.